Hey guys, it's Phil from SmilingGardener.com. If you haven't picked up my free online organic gardening course, you can do that right on the homepage of SmilingGardener.com. Today I'm talking about organic garden pest control. Everything I talk about in these lessons often boils down to three things. Increasing organic matter in your soil, balancing out the fertility, and improving your soil food web. Doing all of that not only grows the nutrient-dense food, but it really prevents the pests from coming in and the diseases and the insects. So that's the main thing. Even when we're doing a good job of improving all that stuff, we're still gonna have a, the occasional plant that isn't healthy or a group of plants that aren't healthy. And so we're gonna get some pests. We're still gonna have some of those. And today I'm talking a little bit about what you can do when you find you have them. But even before them, it still is about prevention just in terms of some smart practices. So when you're buying plants from the nursery, inspect the leaves and even inspect the roots a little bit and see if there are pest problems. You don't want to buy plants that are diseased because that means they're unhealthy and they're going to have disease probably in the future. You don't want plants with aphids or spider mites or anything like that. So that's the number one thing. If you're doing some pruning, disinfect your cicadas or your bypress pruners or whatever you're using with some just some hydrogen peroxide. It's kind of like a natural bleach. Another thing you can do is plant aromatic plants that sometimes confuse some insects. So what I do all throughout the garden is I plant garlic. You can see there's not much going on in this garden yet but there are a few garlics that are coming up here and there just because I always tend to plant them around my various plants and I don't always pick them all. So that's prevention. Now let's go on to a couple of short-term organic pest control measures you can take. Now what I often do, if I have some plants that are really sick and so they're, real, they're covered in insects or diseases, I let them die uh, because I know that that's going to encourage the predators of those predators to come in and set up shop and start eating them and they'll be there for next year. Um, and also I just know that that food isn't healthy so I'm not that interested in eating it anyway. But if you're having a lot of problems, I know you don't want your whole crop to die so you wanna do something about it in the short term. Once you know what the predator is, then it's a lot easier to choose what kind of control you're gonna to do to take care of it. Of course, you always wanna go with the least toxic control and often there are very entirely non-toxic controls, but then you know what you're dealing with. One of the simplest controls for tomato hornworms, because there's not that many of them, there's just a handful of them on my plants, is I just took them off and I squashed them. So that's no big deal. Another one is you can often uh, use your hose to just wash them off. So I don't have my hose here, but psh, psh. That works really well for washing a number of things off. One is insecticidal soap. You want to read the label and make sure that it works for the, the predator that you're dealing with. And another one is horticultural oil. Now these are not entirely benign. They're much less toxic than uh, you know, a chemical pesticide. But when I use something like this, I like to come through a day later and spray some EM onto my leaves or some compost tea, something to repopulate that leaf surface. Because if you're using a soap on your leaves, it's gonna wash off a lot of the beneficial microorganisms. So I wanna repopulate those leaves with something healthy. The next one is biological controls. Now what some people try to do is order some ladybugs and release them into the garden to take care of their aphids. That's usually not gonna work that well because the ladybugs will probably just go somewhere else. The reason they're not in your garden in the first place is probably because there's nothing really there for them there's no reason for them to be there. It can work okay in a greenhouse setting, but what I like to do instead is to, in my vegetable garden, among my vegetables, is plant a bunch of different flowers that attract beneficial insects. And so right now I don't really have uh, anything going on because it's so early in the spring. Here's a rudbeckia that hopefully attracts some beneficials once it gets growing again this year. Here's an echinacea. That'll attract some beneficial insects. So that can work pretty well too. Is just That's really what I focus on a lot is planting a biodiverse garden full of different kinds of plants that are attracting in all these beneficial insects. Along the same lines, you want to provide water for insects. That means a bird bath and not too tidy of a bird bath. You want to have it so that parasitic wasps and other little insects can get in there and drink. Not only bird bath, but watering the whole soil and having so then you'll have little puddles on the soil for them to drink from um, and providing them other kinds of habitat. Water and habitat, grasses, rock piles. I'll show you my rock pile. See here's a pile of rocks that hopefully is a good place for some snakes and other little animals. Here we have just a little pond that has some frogs and toads and things like that. Now I know a lot of people don't like snakes and spiders but I think we need to encourage them with rocks and other organic piles of debris and even just weedy parts in the corner of the garden. So the goal here is to have a healthy garden with lots of organic matter, minerals, fertility, a healthy soil food web. We want to get into prevention by not bringing pests and diseases and insects into the garden in the first place. We do have some short-term controls we can try 
uh, such as a few sprays we can make or buy. But in the long run, we're trying to just create a garden that doesn't attract these pr predators in the first place, but does attract many beneficial insects to take care of any predators that do set up shop. So below, why don't you let me know about your most important predator problem, whether it be insect or disease that you have maybe this year, maybe you're already far enough into the season that you're having an issue, or maybe last year you had something. If you want a little more detail, read the article down below. I always post more detail in the article. Below that, you can sign up for my free online organic gardening course. You can join me over on Facebook at facebook.com slash smiling gardener. And over there, I will get my sister to post some naked photos of... Gone.